Hey everybody, we're going to learn a little bit about two-dimensional kinematics today. I have my son here to help me with the, uh, the art involved in the drawing of a diagram for a two-dimensional kinematics problem. A couple of reminders in case you forgot how to do this or you're like, oh, am I supposed to write this down somewhere or something? Um, where I would like you to write this down is in your notes packet, example three, right there. It's about a cannon on a hill. Okay. Now, the three steps in a two-dimensional, well, really pretty much any problem, but specifically two-dimensional kinematics is you're going to have a diagram. Always have a diagram. All right, now, for two-dimensional kinematics, you're going to write equations for delta x and delta y, and then you solve whatever that happens to mean. All right, Gregory, go. Wow, well, that was fast. Hey, how'd you get those? No. my glasses back. So, now that we have a diagram of a cannon on top of a hill, we should start labeling some quantities from the problem. Like, it says the cannonball travels 200 meters before it hits the ground. All right, that's going to be this distance here. All right. And then it says uh, the height of the hill is 15 meters. I think that we get to probably presume that we ignore how tall the cannon is or that that's included in that 15 meters. And so that means that the vertical displacement is 15 meters. Dad? Yeah? I think you did that wrong. What? The vertical displacement should be negative 50. And why exactly is that? The cannonball goes down. So it does. Well, now that we've overcome that particular obstacle, we're going to start writing some I physics equations. Oh, hey, Gregory. Okay, now we included this negative sign, so now we should be able to fix things. The next bit is we have to start writing our equations for delta x and delta y. All right, so these are our standard equations, if you recall. Delta x equals v naught xt, because there's no horizontal gravity. Gravity's only in the vertical direction, so it only goes into the vertical equation. Now we start plugging in everything that we know. So, for example, the 200 meters, that's our delta x. All right, for v naught x, well, that's kind of actually what we're supposed to solve for here in part B, so we don't really know what that is. So we'll just leave that alone. And for delta y, we put in the um, <clears throat> negative 15. And then put in our 1 half of 9.8. And um, uh, boy. Looking at that equation, it looks like uh, we don't really have enough information because I I don't I don't know what this is right here. It's a mystery. I think this problem is flawed, and I should go home. What? Uh, Dad. Yeah. The velocity of the cannonball is zero. What did you, the velocity of the cannonball is not zero? It goes really fast, like sideways. So fast, it's a cannonball. It's fired sideways. Exactly. It doesn't go up. It only goes forward and then down. The boy speaks the truth. That means the vertical velocity is zero. Because we have to remember about components, right? If we launch this cannonball completely, totally sideways, that means the vertical component is zero. All right, let's put in zero. And now that we have a zero there, we can actually solve this equation. Okay, so now if I do a little tiny bit of algebra, divide both sides by the 4.9, take the square root of whatever that is, the time is 1.75 seconds. All right, I like that number. I like that. All right, now we have to get on now to part B. What was the initial velocity of the cannonball? If we now know the time that the cannonball was in the air, be able to put that in there. All right. So 200 equals 
naught x t. Really here, the v naught x is just v naught. I agree what you're drawing there. I don't oh. know. There's a little skull and crossbones on the cannon now. All right, so that means that v naught is approximately 114 meters per second. Okay. All right, now that is everything that you were asked to do for example three. That's not how every single two-dimensional kinematics problem that you ever do is actually going to go. Sometimes you're going to be given the initial velocity and you'll be expected to solve for the time. Other times you'll be given the time perhaps and be asked to solve for the initial velocity. So what I'm showing you here is kind of like a form of what a two-dimensional problem might go like. So let's check out now the next example, example four, which is going to have us do some slightly different stuff. Now that we've put the cannon on the hill and angled it upwards, it's a completely different question now. Um, so take a moment, turn to the correct page, make sure you're there. Here we go. Same steps. We've got to have a diagram. We have to write equations for delta x and delta y, and then we have to solve. In this particular case, the cannon goes so far that you can't even see the end of the parabola. So I'll move it over there. there. There's the end of the parabola. There's always a monster at the end of the parabola. Because what else would you be shooting a cannon at? Anyway, um, some of the things stay the same. It says in the problem the initial velocity is still 114 meters per second. It's the same hill, so the y displacement is still going to be the same negative 15 meters. Good, good. Oh, Yes, good. All right. Now, um, a lot of the other stuff is going to change, though. If you point the cannon upwards, the range is completely and totally different. So, so now, I don't know delta x anymore. Let's write our two equations, though, and see what we can do. By the way, feel free to pause the video at any time if you're like, I want to work that out on my own and see if I get the same answer as Mr. Erico. And that's, of course, a good way to do things. All right. Now, um, since the cannon is firing at an angle now, it has both an x and a y velocity. So probably the best thing to do at this point is to go ahead and plug in the 114 meters per second in for each one. That's probably the best thing to do. Yep, just exactly like I'm doing right now. Hmm? Whoa, where'd you come from? Jeez, don't sneak up on me like that. What is it, Gregory? Dad, you forgot your components. What do you mean I forgot my components? I put the 114 in both equations. Dad, I think we should envision the velocity as a right triangle. Here, let me go on. Oh, that was really fast. So, so... So this makes so much sense. The total velocity of the cannonball is 114 meters per second, but that's broken up into a vertical component and a horizontal component, which, remember, we talked about how you can find that using your trig functions, right? If a hypotenuse, the magnitude of the velocity is 114, the x side is 114 times cosine of the angle, which happens to be 30 degrees, and therefore this number, so not, not this. All right, and then for v naught y, that one's 114 sine 30, which is 57, so that means I shouldn't have the 114 in here either. Okay, now why did I do that? Because that's probably the number one, one of the number one mistakes that people end up making with these problems is they put in the whole velocity into these equations. And these are components, so you may not put in the whole velocity. All right, now, at this point, uh, you need to solve for the time in one of your equations. So, solving for the time. What? 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 Oh. Well. I don't, I, I don't know how to do the time, guys. I think I'm just totally stuck. There's no Dad, way. you just used the quadratic equation and subtract all the negative roots. 
That is what you do. That's right. Thank you. So, so using the quadratic calculator that I have in my head, I get that the two roots for time are negative 2.52 and 116.52. And of course, we can't have negative time, right? The cannonball isn't over there negative two seconds after it's fired. So we can get rid of that one. All right, so 116.52 is the time of flight. All right, that wasn't actually what they asked. It was, what's the range? So let's take this, plug it into the other equation. If you're getting a general theme here, it's you're going to solve for time often and put it into the other equation, and then things work out. All right, so then 116.52 times 98.7. And the answer is 11,500, oh, no, hold on, my times were wrong. So these are the correct times, because I forgot to divide by 9.8. And if we plug those in, then we have that the actual range of the cannonball is a staggering 1,173 meters, well, 74, it rounds up. So in other words, the cannonball goes over a kilometer, which is actually reasonable and possible for a cannonball. All right, now there are other parts to this question, but I think this is gonna serve as a good introduction to how you begin to approach a basic two-dimensional kinematics problem. Hope that was helpful, and if you have any questions, I'll see you in class.